Hey, what's going on guys? I'm making a video about my experience with the Lear 100 XR bed cap that I've installed on my Ridgeline. I've had this bed cap for a few months and it's decked out with the sliding glass windows, the keyless entry, and the rack on the top. Real quick, I've got a piece of wood up here to illustrate. The height of this rack does not line up perfectly. I don't think that's a big issue as you can always use a spacer, but you can see there's a good deal of distance between the elevation with the OEM rack on the ridge line being taller. Uh, let's talk about the keyless entry system. So it's locked right now, which means that you can't turn the centerpiece. It came with two keys so you can manually lock and unlock it, but it's also tied into the keyless entry. So I'll unlock that. If we open up the rear glass, you can see there's a latch on either side. There's also an emergency release, so if you're inside and you close this on yourself, you'll be able to get out. Let's look from the outside at the mesh. Uh, it's pretty substantial. There's a smaller mesh and then behind it, uh, a larger plastic framing to help reinforce it. It does like to collect leaves, so it's good to clean out this channel. The window itself, it's almost impossible to slide open and closed. Can see if I try to grab it from the outside I have to put quite a lot of effort to uh, get it to move it's easier to push it open as far as how it's mounted there are a total of four mounting points and they replace the uh, these cleats that are installed they're the OEM bed cleats you can see that there's bolts here um, these appear to be stainless or anodized at the very least, and they use nylock nuts at the bottom. The installer told me that I will not have to check the torque of those bolts, so they're pretty good to go. I was, however, disappointed to see that rust is already forming at the hinge for the rear glass. Now the latch for the glass it is adjustable, so you may have to make periodic adjustments to make sure that it closes evenly. Um, I did note as well, this is the cable that's routed for the keyless entry, and it was rubbing a little bit on this threaded connection, so it might be best for longevity to wrap this with electrical tape. Uh, as far as opening the sliding glass, there is a retainer in the back. So you pull this away from the window and then you'll be able to slide it. It's kind of difficult for me to do one-handed. Um, in defense of this setup, I did note that it got easier to open um, as time goes by. So when these are new, the glass is extremely stiff and over time, hopefully it'll continue to loosen up. Um, I did get the roof, these little hangers here and uh, this comes in handy quite a bit when I go sailing. Afterwards, I like to hang up my wetsuit and my life jackets. And uh, that way they're not just balled up in a gym bag getting moldy. Um, one feature that I did not anticipate needing as much as I do is the removable glass. Um, I initially opted for it because I've seen friends with truck caps that don't have the removable glass. The glass gets dirty and you can't see out of it, but it takes a while for that to occur. Um, but I'm actually having to remove this quite frequently, not to clean the glass really, but just to get all the leaves out of here. So let's get this pulled open. And if we look at this channel between the truck and the cap, uh, this is just a few days worth of leaves. And uh, we're in February, so there's not even a lot of leaves falling or anything but uh, gotta clean this out very frequently. Um, there is a sliding glass right here and the protrusion that allows you to grab the glass more easily, it faces the cab. So it's really meant to be operated from the cab. Um, I would have liked to have seen them put it on both sides because sometimes I do want to open the sliding glass from inside the truck. Get this out of here. Now for the ridge line specifically, 
I've been told that it's very difficult to have these uh, Lear caps sealing perfectly. And I have noticed that water does make it inside of the bed. But uh, what I, the benefit is because this does not have a standard bed liner, uh, the water, once it runs and makes its way to the seam for the trunk, it drains out. So let's open this trunk. I'll show you what that looks like. Out. Doogie, out. Good oh boy. So let's open this up. The trunk is able to open fully. It does not come anywhere near the top of the bed, so that's great. Uh, and like I said, when the water does inevitably make it inside of the bed, all it does is it runs into here, falls into this channel, and then it drains out of the factory drains. So that's pretty nice. Um, I do have a cargo net in the side, which is a less than optimal solution because it interferes with the trunk. Every time I open and close it, I have to kind of finagle with it. But it works for me. It works well enough. Uh, what else can I mention? I've talked about the replacement of the factory cleats. Uh, we've got the removable glass. I think that's mandatory if you get any of these installed, especially if you have a ridge line. Uh, you definitely want that feature. Um, there's a carpet. Uh, there is a light as well included. Uh, it's right here. But it's wired into the parking light system. So this is not operable when the truck is off unless your parking lights are on. Um, but again, with the Ridgeline having the original bed lights, I don't really think that uh, it, that's gonna be an issue. Let's ride. Yeah, so let's take a look again from the outside of the truck. I'll, uh, oh, I do wanna note as well, just say uh, there were two quality issues. Uh, right away, this was starting to wear. This occurred within the first week of me having the truck uh, or having the bed liner. I don't think that's a big issue, but it's caused by this part of the glass not being trimmed properly. Uh, it's not even the glass, it's just the plastic piece right there. I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, let's get this closed. Uh, a note about closing this, a lot of people are tempted to close it by pushing on this piece but this is not really a structural part. It's not designed to have a lot of torque. So I like to close it by putting my palm on the latch in the middle, and then I can check each side and make sure that it's fully clicked in. I did, the second quality issue I had is the trim piece here on this sliding glass. It started to pop out on this corner. So I had the dealer reinstall that. I think I could have done that myself with the flathead screwdriver, but I didn't want to risk damaging this seal. As far as the leaves, they are easily able to fall in. They kind of collect on the roof of my truck, and then when I drive, they slide backward and just fall right down into that crevice. And um, one possible issue I can see, if you're off-roading this truck, something could somehow get in here and maybe rip off this this uh, ear, I guess is what I'll call it for lack of a better word. Uh, but you know, I don't really off-road my trucks, so um, I didn't worry about it. But if you are really going through some terrain and some, uh, some trails that have a lot of uh, foliage, that could potentially snag, of course. Um, this bed cap, it's supposed to match the height of the cab, and it does a pretty good job of that. Um, Again, I talked about the height of the uh, bed rack. So that may or may not be an issue for some people. You know, maybe if you're transporting a kayak or something. Um, but you know, kayaks aren't flat anyways. So you're gonna be compensating for the variation of the kayak. But uh, you know, if you're transporting wood, you'll have to keep on hand some spacers to ensure a flat mounting surface. But yeah, that's really about everything I have to say about the Lear bed cap. Let me know if you guys have any questions or any advice about uh, cap ownership. Thank you for watching.